My name is Lolo the Puzzle, and this is Media Delta. Well, um, so this is gonna be a fun episode of Media Delta because, um, <laughs> uh, once again, I feel like this has happened. God, I'm trying to think what the last time that's happened is. I do something that I think is going to be a two-part episode that turns into a one-part episode spoiler about how this discussion is going to go. Although, we'll see how that actually goes. But, um, <laughs> uh, so I wanted to do a series, uh, for, like, you know, it's been a while since we've, like, sat down and watched, like, a series instead of just, like, a singular movie or OVA or whatever. Um, so I was looking at stuff to take a look at and, um, you know, there's stuff that you know by reputation, something that you're like kind of familiar with, but not like super like you've seen maybe a couple episodes and you've just kind of heard about, but you haven't sat down and tried to watch it. Um, and this is what I wanted to do for one of those. This is one of those kind of things. Um, so we're trying to talk about City Hunter today. Um, City Hunter, if you're not familiar with, familiar with, it was originally a manga that showed up in Shonen Jump, uh, that was pretty popular as a, it is a, it is a series that's kind of like, it's one of those that it's not like super big. It's not like Rama one half, or it's not like, you know, the Slayers. It's not one that's like super popular, but it's one that's like, it's like the tier down uh, in terms of like famous anime that it's like you've heard of it, but you've never like it's not like super prevalent. Um, and yeah, it is originally a manga. Uh, the artist or the manga ka for it uh, was one Tsukasa Hojo, uh, which I'm actually familiar with one of their other works more than this one. Uh, I yeah, used to watch. Us that. Yes, um, they did another series called Cat's Eye, which is the one that I've actually watched more than this. Um, and actually, in recent City Hunter stuff, Cat's Eye actually factors into this, but um, that's Cat's Eye, and we're talking about City Hunter. Uh, City Hunter is basically a series that is about a, I guess, a sweeper, is I think the term they use. They call uh, him but, a sweeper, but he's basically a fixer. Yeah, he's basically this like dude that tries to solve crime and all that. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He commits a lot of crap. No, he basically he is a gun for hire. Yes, and um, and he, he has standards, but at the end of the day, yeah, that's what he is. Yeah. Uh, so this series is about his wacky hijinks in terms of um, it trying to solve the things he's hired for. Uh that's pretty much the entirety of the thing, and it's a very kind of. When you watch a couple episodes, you kind of get the gist of it. Um, it is but, incredibly uh, formulaic. Yeah, but it it's one of those series that's like it's not like a it's not like a driving plot. I mean, there's a small one, but it's not like a driving plot throughout the thing. It's very much a kind of pick up and go kind of thing. Um, but yeah. Uh, that is the, what we're going to be talking about, and I was not the only one who watched it, so please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Axe, and I'm here to not watch this. Hi, I'm Carvel, and we're going to discuss cultural radiation today. Hi, I'm Torben Typhus, and I'm here for that mokery mokery feeling. God. Um, so, for sake of transparency... Uh, this is one of the few times that we've actually had to tap out. Um, very sort of. early. Very sort early. Of. Sort, sort of. of. Sort of. With an asterisk. Because some of us did extra credit. <laughs> yes. Um, so when... Because I've been starting to show this a lot of this stuff off on my Discord. Um, which, by the way, you can join by going to Discord to LDP Alive. Um, and when we were watching this, we'll get into it. There is an element of the show that uh, is a bit of a contentious thing about this series, but uh, we watched two episodes and the majority of us thought that we'd had enough. Uh, so we ended up tapping out and watched an episode of Cat's Eye. Um, but uh, Torpo here 
I decided, and I know, Carvel, you mentioned that you watched other ones. I watched a episode because I had to work today, so. Okay. Um, so Torpo was very meticulously uh, recapping the experience of the remaining episodes that I originally planned. Because originally I had planned six episodes for this, which, if you want to play at home, so you know what episodes we're talking about, uh, were... I'm going to have to scroll, scroll up. up a little bit, baby. Yeah, I'm going to have to scroll up uh, a bit. I know it is... God, it also... 1, 4, 10, 17, 23, and I know I'm missing one of them. Yeah, it's also great because I, I want to go through the episode names because that is one thing that I... God, they do do that pose a lot. <laughs> it was, Yeah, I think it was like 1, 4, 6, 10, 17, and 23. Yeah, um... God, some of these have really good names, so I want to go. I want to list them off because they're good. God, yeah, I look God, I had, oh, there it is. There it is. Episode because there was an episode that I thought was really good. Yep. Uh, so it is episode one. Uh, one cool sweeper X Y Z is a dangerous cocktail. Episode four, Lady Vanish, Boutique of the Shadows. Uh, episode six, no romance, no romance for this actress. The last shot for hope. Uh, episode ten, one dangerous tutor. Home cooking from the heart of a Sukuban or hot, the heart for a Sukuban. That episode uh, is really good. Yeah. Episode 17. Summer's lonely designer. Rio has a thing for the super high leg type. Uh, in episode 23. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Go the killer bees. A bride fallen from the sky. <laughs> uh, so those are the episodes that we watch with an asterisk. Um, because I had actually watched a few episodes. I had watched. Some of these before we had even watched, like I watched the I definitely know I watched the um, uh, episode six, uh, one, which I thought was a neat thing. And then I actually watched, I think it was episode seven, uh, episode which was six is the one with the no, wait, that's four. Go on. Uh, episode episode four. I think that one, I think, was a bad one to have the second be the second one we watched because that one's something. Um. But uh, episode six was also or episode seven was also interesting because basically it's like, oh, Rio can shoot his gun through the same hole for all like a thing like. Yeah, yeah. I do want to mention that I also had seen some of this before we even did this because I would watch it occasionally when waiting in the parking lot for some people. Yeah. Um. So that is how much we have all watched and. Actually, I think you just watched those two episodes. I've only seen those two episodes. Okay. Um, so, I'm trying to think of how I want to do this. Um, I think Torpid should go first. Yeah, how about... Right. Yeah, let's... I was going to say, I was probably going last, so I could say everything, but yeah, it's up to you. Only because Torpid is the only one of us who went all the way through. Oh, I went above and beyond, because I also watched episode <laughs> five for fucking context, because Lolo didn't include it, but it's very important. Look, they don't show, they don't have a thing that says, hey, a major character dies in this episode. Spoiler. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Because uh, it's like, oh, why is this one character that just shows up and for like the first couple episodes? It's, oh, it turns out they get super killed. Literally gets fucking murdered. Yep. <laughs> it's a shame because he was way cooler than the protagonist. Yep. Um, so, God. Um, hmm. Let's see. I mean, I could go first just to kind of give it like. Sure. I think you you probably have the more. I'm the most grounded of of us as a, from a neutral mm-hmm. standpoint of on the series. Mm-hmm. So, let's get this out of the way and out the first part. The main character is an awful person, and I cannot. In good faith, recommend this to people unless unless you have a level of anime tolerance that approaches levels of Torpid and I, which is probably unhealthy. But probably this is a show very much of the '80s in which it was created, which means that there is content of like the main character's actions that is not okay, but is a result of the cultural radiation of just this was just the kind of tropes that were in play in the 80s of Japanese mega anime series. This does not excuse said actions, but we're going to get right into the head of this of just, this is, if you want to go to look at this, this is what you're going to be getting. 
Now, yeah. that said... What you're getting I, is the mockery feeling. As Thorpe had said. But, w- that aside, if you're re- going to go into this, I think, and I enjoyed the episodes that I saw, including the extra one I watched, because it is a very much a show that lives on, on trying to do a debt audacious plot setups and turnarounds. So this is going to be the most neutral response you hear this episode. So I cede the floor to let the other speak. Okay. Um, yeah. Just to put a slight in, this is again, not a, like a, this is a condemnation of it sort of. Um, but, uh, Yep, the Rio Saiba sucks as a mm. protagonist. Oh, he's uh, awful. Uh, that is like the main caveat of this. And I would say like this goes above and beyond the stuff that you would find in the 80s. Um, they try, especially once the side, uh, the side character Kauri gets introduced, they try and like try. It's like, oh, no, this is actually like he is a douchebag for doing this. But also, he kind of wins out in the end, so it doesn't quite work out. Okay, so I will say before I, I go on, like, whatever I talk about, the show has a formula from start to finish. Rio gets hired for a job, is weird towards the lady of the week, gets super competent, does the job, super serious, or sometimes just comedic, depending on the episode, and then he gets the girl at the end. But it doesn't matter because he just fucks off. So yeah, every time he gets the girl. Every fucking time without fail. Yeah, go on, Lolo. Yeah. Uh, I feel like that is the thing that you need to, when you're talking about City Hunter, you need to that hammer that point in real quick because that is a major, that is probably going to be a major point of contention if you're going to go into this. Yes, absolutely. I didn't intend to, I might have ended up making it sound softer than it was, but yes, that is what you need to know going into this. It's the main character sucks. Just. He is very sexually aggressive. There's a lot of groping. There's a lot of sexual harassment. Yeah. Yeah. It never goes beyond groping, but it's still fucking groping. No, it, it, like there is straight up. He lifts some gr- lady's skirt at some point. Mm-hmm. Like that is a stuff that that is there is criminal action in this show by the main character. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, so fair warning about that. Um. I guess without that, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, would it be? Mm. I, I kind of want to hear Axe's opinion first before I start talking about. Yeah, because I'm I'm debating about whether or not because I know between Axe and Torpo have somewhat conflicting thoughts. Which is fine. But, but, but yeah, that's fine. I'm just curious about which one would be interesting to hear first. I would still say let Axe go first. Let Torpo yeah. eat his pizza. He's obviously enjoying it very much. Yes. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> Axe, let's, let's start with you then. I guess. Okay. Because I was going to bounce off of Torpid's ideas because I was, uh, I kind of know what he was going to say, but y'all know what I'm going to say. So I'll just get it out. Um, I hated this. Um, so when we went and we watched The Slayers, uh, when I did my bit, my, my thoughts on it, I said that. Um, Anime that kind of looks like that, that comes from that that period, I tend to avoid because I have some misgivings about anime, especially from that certain period. And there are certain types of anime that I, I sometimes come across, and it's just got, you know, that anime stuff, trademark. Um, and this is exactly it. This is exactly one of the reasons why I avoid a lot of old anime. And I know that's kind of a broad brush, but, like... This is what this is. This anime is exactly what makes me so trepidatious about watching old older stuff, uh, because it's kind of it, it, there's you never quite know what you're about to get. Like with the Slayers, it kind of is a little misleading. You, you think you're going to get something, but you get something really great instead, right? And this it had something that kind of had my interest. I like the idea of guns for hire or bounty hunters or whatever the fuck you want to call them. And then he, all he's all a this. Yeah, whatever, like whatever you want to call them, it's all basically the same. But like, it's it's just not enjoyable. It's so soulless, and it just 
dives directly into some of the worst anime tropes you can think of. I mean, it doesn't hit them all, but it hits a good enough of them. The constant sexual harassment and assault, like, there's only so far I can take a dislike of a main character. You know, um, Shadow Hearts, for example. Shadow Hearts' main character is kind of a dick. And he's a little skeevy, but he doesn't go too far. He doesn't go far enough to make it not okay. And then you have the character from, say, Deponia, who is utterly without redemptive ability, uh, re anything redemptive. And that's who this, that, this character, like, they try to, they try to undercut how shitty he is by making him so incredibly badass. In the first episode we watched, um, he, he whipped out a 357 Magnum to shoot at a guy. And the guy had a, 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 a uh, hostage. Uh, thank you. Hostage. And so the guy saw that this gun was pointed at him. And it would basically ruin him forever. Uh, so he inched towards the window so that um, because there are lots of people outside. So if the main character took the shot, it hit somebody else. And that was his that was his gambit. So the main character fires the gun and there's a whole bunch of stuff. And then it revealed that the guy gets shot in the shoulder. And he looked at him, and we pan back, and what he had done is he placed his own hand in front of the magnum, fired it through his hand to slow the bullet down, and then and that's what he did. Now, that's awesome. It's stupid. It's definitely not how it works. And he still gets use of his hand, which we all know is not how it works, but it's still on its head kind of cool. And that's how they try to offset this character's terrible tendencies, his awful behavior. And... I have my limits, and uh, when it comes to sexual stuff, you know, I used to be a lot more open sexually about things, and I've become a little more, uh, a little more guarded with that kind of stuff. And too much, too much of it, like too many innuendos, too many references to sex, too much this and that, that can that can already kind of wear me down. But this was not even like consensual. This was a constant barrage. Of him just assaulting women. And there's nothing funny about it. It's nothing charming about it. There's nothing remotely entertaining about it. And since the episodes were so heavy on it, like they really emphasized it. It's like, you don't need to. Show me once, and I know, okay, he's garbage. I don't need to see it every episode, every two damn minutes, you know? So, um, personally, and obviously I was very careful about this because I know you don't like you don't like us trying to like accidentally guide the show because sometimes we, we get tired of the thing and we don't want to see anymore, but maybe you want to keep watching or keep playing it. So I didn't want to really just jump and go, please turn this the fuck off. But I was feeling throughout that second episode, I really was about to speak up and say, please turn this off because I can't watch this. There's... Or I would have, or I would have left the call entirely because I just couldn't, I couldn't stand it. There is a thing where it's like, of course, like, yeah, if there is something that's like, oh, it just might not be something to taste. However, the when you start getting into stuff that might be considered content warning territory, yeah. that's that's a completely different ball game. That is like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable showing this. Yeah. Kind of like how, you know, we were talking about you with the thing. And I know that that's going to be a very difficult one for you because of some of the content. And I could see maybe you having to, like, have to walk away or something like that. But, like, I think that that's more of an aversion to a very specific thing. This is an aversion to – and I'm not trying to say that um, – you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, um, I'm trying to not – I'm wording this really badly, and I'm very sorry because I don't mean to – Do you mind to, if I like, try and – Yeah, go for it. it. Go so, for it. It's the thing with the stuff that's in City Hunter, there is an element of shit. Well, there's an element of especially with it being like sexual harassment and all that. That is something that is someone being like taken advantage of mm -hmm. and kind of glorifying it. It's like, like not glorifying, glorifying it, but it's like, oh, it's making light of something that actually kind of sucks. Yes. Whereas if you think the thing about the thing and I mean, like the stuff that I have problems with in the thing that is body horror, and that is just something that that is right. a medium that I just have personal heebie-jeebies about. Yeah, right, I don't right, have right. like it's a, it's an aversion to you have an it's aversion the difference to between personal misgivings and just outright genuine problems. Yes, like in that like, case, it's 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 an issue of a, an element of horror 
versus an element of uh, socially unacceptable behavior. Very, 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 very different things. And I only kind of brought them up because my brain kind of goes, well, aversion, aversion. So, like, how I was feeling about this was, this was like, all right, maybe I can power through it. Um, and and maybe we could go on. But the more that I watched, the more I felt uncomfortable. And then everybody else was kind of like, except I don't think Torpid. I don't think you said anything specifically. Well, I think it was more that it was like, oh, yeah, this sucks. But yeah, they... nobody was getting any enjoyment out of it. Like, at least that's the feeling I got um, on my end. And maybe that was just a little bit of projection on my part, but I wasn't enjoying it. It didn't sound like you were enjoying it, Lolo. Uh, Carnival, it didn't sound like you were enjoying it. And Torpid, you watched it because you're you're when you approach Media Delta, you approach it in a uh, very um, observatorily. You you want to observe it and you want to give like your full thought in it. So you're gonna you're definitely of of all of us, you're the most likely to follow through on stuff. I think. At least that's just what I've I've gotten from you is you you you're very much like if everybody else is just like I'm out after one episode you're like now nah, I'm gonna watch all six and then I'll tell you whether it sucks or not. Yeah, I I wanted to basically solidify my opinion on it before I I really went into this, so I did watch the rest of the episodes. Mm. And to be fair, I felt like we didn't give it a fair shake, but I'll get into my feelings when you're done because I right. have a lot to say. Right. Yeah. And obviously, I have a lot to say too. So like. My the big gist of it was is that the the amount of sexual assault and harassment I felt was so overwhelming that I just couldn't give the show a, a a shake beyond two episodes because it was just too egregious. It was too often, and it got in the way of the interesting stuff. Like as dumb as that shooting through the hand bit is, that was actually kind of interesting. And there yeah, are times uh... where he he does cool shit. Yeah, there, there's another episode later on that you didn't see, but basically at one point he's using fucking full metal jacket rounds from in his gun to fire at steel beams to light up sparks so he can see briefly in the dark so he can shoot other people. Right, and stuff like that's cool. And if this show had like, just done that and left out the skis, I'd be on board. I would be like, down with this. But There was also one of the episodes we did watch. It was the second one we watched, episode yep. four, where at the very end, he fucking shoots between a moving train yes! between open windows to hit a dude in the hand. And it's like, shit, that's fucking awesome. That's we'll go 13 levels of shit. Yeah, I was actually just about to say that. Yeah, well, you did. You actually said that um, there, uh, right as the bullet goes through the window, the, the second window, you actually brought up the Golgo Go 13 shot from the 48th floor? Yeah, it was with the, the building. Yeah, the going best part of that building. fucking movie over here. Yeah. Right, but that's that's the thing, like I said. You know, and I don't want to repeat myself too much because I don't like repeating myself. But um, if the show had focused on the character being a uh, breaking the rules kind of fixer, bounty hunter, cleaner enter noun here and made him at least maybe made him a little more interesting as a person take out the skis and do something different with him i could actually probably recommend this or even would have been interested to watch more than that but what it was offering me in those two episodes alone was enough to tell me that this was not worth my time and and, and that a very very adversely affects how I plan to score it later on. But uh, I think I've said, I think I've covered all of my points and anything further will just be redundant. So I yield the floor. All right. Uh, Tarpo. So I need to clarify, like just say this beforehand, but I have like this natural affinity for like old kind of, kind of schlocky, kind of dumb anime from like the nine, the, the, 80s and 90s. I enjoy that sort of thing. Am I gonna say it's good? Usually not really. I enjoy Angel Cop. So what the fuck do I know? <laughs> but fate. This is okay. Fate is a different beast entirely. You fucking <laughs> get out of this. <laughs> you're, you're, that is that you, is a beast all its own. You know okay, <laughs> you can say that with Torpo in the room, but doing that with Carnival also in the room is also probably going to cause problems. <laughs> but regardless, yeah. Uh, I just want to get that away, but it's City Hunter is a show that I think is interesting. When it's good, it's pretty good, but the problem is there are quite a few lows. 
It is also very formulaic, and the formula's not very good. Not because, like, the bits in between are, but the start and the finish, especially the finish, is the real problem with the formula, where every time he gets the girl, even if he's really fucking awful the whole time. But there were some genuinely good episodes, and that's I, I felt like we didn't give it a fair shake. And watching through it, I'm like, hmm, he's, he still sucks. But there was one episode I do want to say that stands out, because I thought it was actually genuinely really good. So... Um, it was episode number 10, I think it was, the Tudor one, the Deadly Tudor. Yep. Which, normally the show has an issue with tone, in that it is wildly inconsistent, and, like, I'm fine with, like, a serious show with some jokes, or a jokey show with some serious bits, but this just kind of jumps in between and suffers for it, often. But, this episode was purely comedy, and it worked because he wasn't skis the entire episode. Because the basic premise is that he blew a hundred million yen and then the Yakuza gave it to him to do a job and he couldn't pay them back because he blew it immediately. <laughs> so he did this job uh, to take care of the, the head of the Yakuza, his daughter, who is a teenager, third year in high school, whatever. And so the entire episode is basically him trying to take care of her and get her out of trouble, but he doesn't. It very firmly establishes that he has standards and he will not go after teens. So that entire episode, he never tries anything like that. And instead, it's just a pretty goofy, fun comedy episode about him trying to keep this girl out of trouble and her constantly finding more. And I thought it was actually really fun and genuinely pretty funny at points because, once again, it shaved away the real problematic bit about that character. And so it worked because of it. But otherwise, yeah, no, the, the sexual harassment thing's really awful. It's a shame, too, because he does some really cool things, and there's some really interesting ideas here and there. But the problem is, Ryo is just not good. And there was another episode I did as extra credit, as as was mentioned, um, which is basically a very important character-affirming moment, which is essentially about how he gets his new partner and how his old partner died. And it was kind of a shame because there was a really good dynamic between him and his old partner because it was a very solid foil because his old partner was very serious, very confident, but really genuinely cared about Ryo and respected him. And Ryo genuinely cared about him and respected him and they had a really good dynamic going. And then he died. But I don't know. I, I think it's weird too because as the episodes went on, I noticed he stopped mentioning his little dumb mockery bit to the point where like, Another character called him out on it, and he just, like, please don't remind me. He was still awful, still constantly flirting, but it's, like, it's really weird the way it changed over time. That strikes to me as the production team is, like, okay, we done the, we've done some, we've done some direct adaptions from the manga. Let's actually clean this up, like the same thing that happened with Lupin the Third. Yep. Yeah. Lupin uh-huh. had, had a lot more time to to bake and become better. This does, uh, this is what only two seasons long. Uh, this is, there's actually like five seasons of this. This yeah. is actually like, it actually went on for a yeah, while. We, we only saw a few episodes of the first uh, season. Okay. There's also stuff that has come out recently for this. Uh, city hunter has been going on for a while and like, there's other adaptations of it too. With I will, other countries. The yeah. Korean and the Jackie Chan film. Which right. I hope we do the Korean film, the Korean series at some point. Then I'll, I'll retract my statement because it's inaccurate. A French film? There's a French film? Yeah, it came out in 2019. Oh, God. I, Wait, Jackie I, Chan did a City Hunter adaptation? Yes. Yes. Uh, huh. It came out in 1993? Yes. Uh, there's a famous scene, actually, from that movie uh, where Jackie Chan, of all things, uh, I think it like takes place in an arcade. Uh, so it's Jackie Chan as Rio cosplaying as all the characters from Street Fighter and doing the moves. He does them hard. Yes, and does them hard. <laughs> it's really weird. I gotta sit down and watch some more Jackie Chan films. Yes, that would be good. Yeah, shame we aren't. Yeah. No, and I, th- yeah. I, I, I guess hearing that, I do feel a little sad that we didn't go forward but at the same time like 
No, I can understand stopping completely. Rio yeah. is awful, and if you can't get past that, you won't be able to sit down and watch more of it. Yeah, no, like perfectly that's... fine. We couldn't get to the good stuff because it was blocked by all that bad shit. Like, yeah, no, there's a reason I straight up said you have to have a level of anime tolerance on levels of like me and torpid, which again is something that's like it's terminal. Yes, yeah. it's terminal. You sipped a little bit of anime every day to get it. Because by the time we got to the end of the second episode, it was feeling like a gamble as to whether or not the next episode might be better, or God forbid, even worse. Mm -hmm. And no, I just thankfully I feel like four was low. also four is very dark compared to a lot of the other episodes because mm -hmm. four basically covers uh really gruesome things happening to these women, which is basically uh, stiffing their muscles and plastinization to use them for human trafficking as mannequins it's really fucked up and i guess the, I, I guess the territories it, it it not just the the main character rio just the treatment of women in general in the show just it's just one of those things i can't get past it's too much and that's from somebody who's watched some really trashy horror films like i spit on your grave i've seen that and this was a bit too much for me yeah, that's the other thing too is uh we didn't really get to see her at all in action, but that's why I like Kauri a lot, because she is a very good foil to Ryo. And she's the, the only person who's capable of handling all of his bullshit and rolling with it. Mm. And it's she's kinda neat. She's kinda cool. But just overall, yeah, no, it's still a lot. Uh it's, it's part of also why I liked the uh the the, the teenager episode as well. Because she knew how to roll with his bullshit and fuck with him. Um, it's kind of the thing why, yeah, yeah, especially I, I, I God. I enjoyed it. Is it great? God no. Uh, it's definitely got issues. And once again, if you can't get past the main character's problem, which I can understand if you don't, you, you shouldn't watch it. There are some things that are, I do want to mention that are very that it does write though that aren't just strictly like the action and the writing. Uh. A few things are the characters are incredibly expressive in a way that's not really that often and it works really well and I like it. And it's almost like kind of something that anime has lost with time is that level of uh, over the top expressiveness. That's because of crunch. Uh, I will also say that the opening and openings and endings and music in general are pretty solid, but the opening and endings are fucking absolute bops they're so fucking good fantastic songs like, both of them the opening is some really damn solid city pop if you would all like that genre i would almost say that city pop came, probably um, came from that song right. <laughs> i mean i i i'll i'll also agree i thought the i thought the intro and outro when we were allowed to see it uh were good <laughs> uh yeah so i i will say those um, but also, I, I do want to mention, the backgrounds in this show are fucking gorgeous. It, th the show has really weird details uh, all over the place. And, and one of those is, uh, the, the backgrounds are really, really good. They're really good looking. Um, and also, on top of that, uh, as I said, the, the weird... The, the weird, there's still a lot of weird detail all over the place, like the way things move and destruction and all that. Like the characters are somehow the least detailed things in the show, but like everything around them is very detailed. The cars and also there is a lot of love put into the rendering of those fucking guns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was gonna say like there is you can tell what model they are using like there is a in the fourth episode there is a very close-up shot of uh Kauri dressed up uh holding a revolver to someone you can tell it's a smith and wesson model nine or like it's not and the thing is it's not even a standard smith and wesson model 29 which is the dirty hairy gun by the way uh it's a shortened barreled version of it because you can if you look up a picture of an actual short barrel model 29. You can tell like the only like you can tell, OK, there's the extractor, there's cylinder like there's like where's the gap. You can see like where the block for the rear and front sights are like the front sight little part of the revolver is was modeled 
identically. Like it's almost traced. And I mean the fifty, the three fifty seven Magnum uh, yep. looked exactly like a three fifty seven Magnum should. It so, is yeah, a Colt. I, it is a Colt Python. Mm-hmm. You can tell. Uh, it's really good because it's all kinds of guns. It's not just like simple handguns or anything like that. Like there is a lovingly rendered LMG that appeared in one episode several times, including as part of a fucking drive-by. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I, I was posting a bunch of images while I watched it to help me focus and also just keep everyone apprised of the situation. And I noticed a trend. And so I started posting it every time it happened where literally every episode at least once has an aim down the sights of a gun shot. Without fail, it's so fucking detailed every time. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a good framing shot. Mm hmm. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But yeah. Basically, the long and short of it is there are definitely some interesting episodes, and it really works best when it's not focusing on Rio being a perv, which unfortunately is a rarity. And I prefer it when the episodes are more consistent in tone, which often they aren't. They kind of just jump all over the place. But overall, I enjoyed watching it. Is it great? No. I had fun, though, and I think it was okay. But yeah, no, it's, it's, there's definitely the one issue, the big issue that's a lot harder for some to get over, and that's perfectly fine. I understand completely, but I had fun, at least, is, is what I'll say. There are issues, there are a lot of issues. That aren't just that, but overall, I had fun. Yeah, it's like it's very much a, um, yeah, um, I, it's so I also like when I like remember like sitting here, I'm like, oh god, yeah, the um, like I remember Rio being like, I'm like, oh okay, yeah, he's kind of kind of a perv, but I didn't remember like I mean, it shows up like early on. I sure it probably gets better. No, it's it is a I do find that it is a detriment to my enjoying of that, especially uh, as I mentioned, I watched the not only the mangaka who did City Hunter, his previous work, also the director of this TV show did the TV series for Cat's Eye. And that series does kind of a similar thing um, where it's a similar, for, very formulaic uh, kind of thing. But it also, the main characters in Cat's Eye are three women, and it handles it infinitely better than anything Ca uh, City Hunter does. Um, in fact, you can almost see that, like, Kauri was kind of almost a recreation of one of the three sisters in Cat's Eye. Uh, and, like, there is a main guy character in uh, Cat's Eye who, like, is the anti-Rio, who is very straight-laced, and usually the um, other girls have to, like, get him to loosen up. Uh, I'm sure it's probably not perfect, uh, but it is something that's a lot better, so it's really disheartening to see it in City Hunter um, kind of be like that. And I kind of feel like it's kind of annoying to me because it also, as I was kind of watching, I'm like, you know, if I were to go for that kind of same formula as kind of bumbly guy does cool shit, the thing is, is that there's other series that have done something just similar. Watch I, Cobra. Yes, like, just watch Cobra. And also we were talking, because uh, actually when you were talking about like the sexualization of the show, yeah. one of the other things I was thinking of, one is Space Cobra, which I know only me and Torpor were on that watching of that one. Um, but the other work that uh, the guy who did uh, Cobra did uh, was Goku Midnight Eye, uh, which if we think, ignoring the second episode, if you think about the first episode of, of Goku Midnight Eye, how very sexually charged the imagery in that show is. And Goku is like, it's not, he's not really being skeevy at all. And it's just, it's, there is definitely sexually charged energy in that show. <laughs> but tree. It, the, 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 the day tree and the motorcycle lady. Um, but in that show, it's it doesn't come off as skeevy. It just is interesting set dressing. Whereas in this, it just feels really skeevy. Space Cobra is kind of the same thing where it's 
a lot of sexually charged set dressing, especially character or costume designs. But the character is part of an aesthetic rather than. Yeah, because all the women in that show are very competent. Mm. And I mean, some of them die as part of the plot, but they're they die with a purpose and usually doing something pretty. And they usually get their shots in before that. They don't really the women in that show don't really get fridged. Um, whereas in this show, it just always felt kind of skeevy. Mm -hmm. Um, and also like loop on the third, as we mentioned, uh, the early, early loop on the third stuff is incredibly not good in terms of that stuff. But as it goes on, yeah, I mean, oh, he still has weird things of Fujiko in it, but for the most part, it's still, it's better about it. I mean, to be fair, is it Lupin the Third? Like at this point, seventy years at this. Yes, uh, Lupin the Third. I'm pretty sure started in the '60s. Um, but yeah, it's. I it's the thing is like I feel like if <laughs> I feel like if <laughs> um I were to watch a show that's kind of like City, I feel like there's just better stuff to watch. There is. That's kind yes. of the issue. Is that yeah. to be fair, a lot of those have had you know more modern adaptations or like cobra was just more interestingly written and cobra was a lot bigger on consent let's say yes um yeah, no cobra rules <laughs> so I, good no, i was so you mentioned something before and it kind of got my mind uh my wheels spinning around and honestly what i would have liked to have seen was like uh, you, you said you said how he like they the they the character's supposed to like part of it is they bumble their way through but they're also badass. So my brain just started thinking, what if it was Mr. Magoo, <laughs> but with guns? And I would watch I, that. I would watch the shit out of a guy I who's like, like just a complete mess as a person, but not in like a nasty way. But he still manages to get the shit done. God, I feel like that's a that's got to be. That's got to be a thing somewhere. Uh, uh, God, it almost in a way, I'm like, in the kind of Black Lagoon? <laughs> yeah. 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 Why Black didn't Lagoon we watch Black Lagoon great. instead of this? God. It, man, that's an interesting series. I, there's I also some things, that, there's some things about that show that's also problematic, but also. To be fair, that's the dub that made that decision more than this the actual true. show itself. Yeah. But that's a discussion. Yeah. Otherwise, all together. Oh, um, yeah. Uh, one point that I feel uh, that did anyone have any last? Because I think this might be a good last point. Yeah, I've mostly said my piece. Yeah, I've said my piece. I, I will say actually one thing quick is one thing I appreciate about a lot of these older shows that a lot of modern shows don't really do is the willingness to be goofy and just really over the top with expressions and have the character main character be bumbling because a lot of more modern anime just tends talk to about have isekai boom overly serious with the main character or they're too hyper competent and it's kind of actually making a lot of them bland mm -hmm. very mary sue because like I still consume a lot of modern anime as, as well as watching old stuff and yeah they're they're trends that are there's a I certain love. art that is dead, and it's kind of tragic. Mm. I mean, that's just, that's just the thing of, like, how anime gets made of just... Because of its direct nature of the popular popular stuff is getting adapted, and the lowest common denominator is trash. We, we just have to accept that. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, there's this weird... They're no longer willing to have the main character be goofy or a fuck-up. It's mean, kind of a shame, because that's a thing I appreciate about this about Cobra, about all that. Just like, the Columbo method, pretending to be incompetent. I mean, that's because we can see that as just the general direction of culture in general around the world is that the idea of incompetence is beat... The idea of making a mistake has been beaten so far out of people's ability to to deal with is that we, we idealize a perfection that we'll never achieve. Something, something, uh, rising flag behind me no i mean i i actually agree with you um that is that is something that i've actually noticed not just in media but just in, in social things in general is the the mentality that you can't fuck up because if you fuck up well that's it's the end of the world and and like 
and I'm not talking that kind of thing. That that's I don't believe in that shit. But um, but I'm just talking just in general, like making just general mistakes and people kind of blowing it out proportion. And I could kind of see, I kind of see how that would alter the direction that we we would produce our media. Where I mean, like one of my one of my favorite horror films is Shaun of the Dead, and all the characters are fuck ups. Everybody's fucking up left and right. And it's so yeah. much more enjoyable than like um some of the more serious fare. Um like the stuff that's like overly serious. Uh or just dumb shit like Jason X, which is incredibly fucking terrible. It's a terrible film, but it's in- entertaining to watch because it's just so stupid and it goes with it. Like there is something to be said about uh incompetence, whether intended or accidental. It can be a lot more entertaining than somebody who's an Ubermensch. Well, yeah, to be fair, it's also a case of, in my my case, the, the point I'm more want to get across, it's like this weird inability to show weakness in your characters, which is mm. an absolute shame. Speaking of Shaun of the Dead, where they're willing to show that too. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like everybody, it, it, it shows that everybody's got some kind of like, like Shaun is just stuck in his way of life. He, he, he can't make those commitments. And then you have every other character, ha- each has their own little like flaws and that sets them apart from each other and not only that but it it directly affects the plot in multiple situations and i agree with you torpid i I agree that we need we we are missing that kind of media where people are vulnerable they're not perfect not able to solve any problem in a minute you know well it's like part of why i like colombo and why a lot of people like colombo is because he is very normal very unassuming and he pretends to be incompetent is a means to an end. One and more like, thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know. I just wanted to lament about that a little bit. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, so one thing that I did want to pull up because um, one, it is actually related to games and two, uh, it is something just to kind of as a time capsule to show what else was available when City Hunter, particularly the show came out because this came out in 1987. Uh, Rio Saiba, uh, because it was originally part of Jump, the manga was, uh, Ryo Saiba was one of the playable characters in a Famicom game called Famicom Jump, uh, which was basically a giant collaboration stuff of a bunch of stuff that was in Shonen Jump. Uh, if you're familiar with like the DS game, that was like Jump Superstar, or that Jump Force game that came out and didn't do well, which, by the way, Ryo Saiba, I think, was DLC for that game. Not surprised. <laughs> um... This came out for the NES in 1988. Uh, just some other stuff that was available at that time because Rio Saiba was there. Uh, which, by the way, uh, one thing I did forget to mention is that the voice actor for Rio in this was Akira Kamiya, uh, who the main character that he is probably known for uh, shows up in this jump game. Uh, Kenshiro from Fist of the North Star. Uh, was Speaking also... of which, why don't you mention voice actors real quick? <laughs> uh, well, I think why well, who was the other one that was Rio. like Rio? Rio Saiba is voiced by the dude who also does Kenshiro's voice. That's, that's, what, just, said, that's what Lolo just yeah, yeah, torpid. No, I think you, are you ear, your earphones no, are fucking I'm up like, again? Basically, but yeah. No, <laughs> go on. Go on. Uh, no, well, no, it's funny, torpid, because you literally just said it just after Lolo said it, like literally uh, after. Um, other things that should okay. So I don't know what this is. Uh, I do recognize it's a yeah, manga that's like Japanese only. Um, Son Goku from the original Dragon Ball. This is pre-Z. Uh, Ryo Saiba. Uh, yeah. Arale from Dr. Slum. Um, Pegasus Seiya from Saint Seiya. Why have we not done a Saint Seiya yet? Oh, because my Because Saint Seiya no. games are trash. <laughs> I'm not trash. South American enough for Saint Seiya. Okay, but no, 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 the MASH yeah. game was trash and we still played it. This is true. Let's give, let's give this also, to Carnival. That game... That game also takes like five minutes, whereas those Saint Seiya games go on for way too long. I don't need to play it long. I just want to do Saint Seiya on me here. I'm, Delta. Not, um, I'm not South American enough for Saint Seiya. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there's another one that's uh, I recognize this thing. It's Sakigake Otojuku, uh, the Momotaro character from that. That is one that it's a name that does not make any sense. But if you've seen the character, you probably was like, oh, it's from that. Mm. Um. Joseph Joestar from jo- Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. I'm going to assume probably part one. No, Joseph Joestar. Oh, Joseph Battle- Joestar part two. Yeah, okay. Battle Tennessee. 
on something called Doberman Deco, which I've never heard of. Uh, something from something. I've never heard of that. Something uh, from something, yes. Subasu, I like something from something. Subasa Rizura from Captain Subasa. Um, also, Kanikuman. Basically, every fucking notable character from a specific oh, no, so period this was, of time. So this, these are the characters that are in that Famicom oh, okay, jump game. Okay, okay. No, yeah, no, they're, they're, yeah. They're, yeah, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're so that's just some of the stuff. Uh, also, some other franchises that show are up in here. Um, let's see, Center. Cat's Eye shows up in this. Uh, Captain Tsubasa. Um, a series that I would love to talk about because it's really weird. Uh, that is called uh, Ginga Nag. Uh, let's see, Kinga Nagar. Uh, R- Nagareboshi Jin, uh, which is known as Silver Fang. It is a basically Fist of the North Star with dogs. Oh, God. Is that the one where, he, turns into, where he murders the bear and turns yes. into the. Yes. Yeah. the bear by doing the Sonic Chop. Yeah, so <laughs> I want to see so this so now. Fucking good. No, it's not worth watching. <laughs> no, it's not good. But uh, it's so so good. that series has uh, the anime, I'm pretty sure, has Fist of the North Star syndrome in that it's like 50 episodes. Oh god, we're never watching the actual original anime of Professor North Star. Don't oh, watch god, that. No. Watch well, one of the don't movies worry about instead. That's never an issue, but that's not today. But I want to um, see cells get. Moved. I do want to mention, literally, oh fuck, literally the year before this came out, fucking Bubblegum Crisis premiered. Yep. And let me tell you about my undying love of Bubblegum Crisis and how significantly different it is in its handling of women compared to this. Yeah, <laughs> well, okay, there's another problem with that thing, and that has to do with the artist, but that's mm-hmm. for discussion. Okay, that was one specific episode. Uh, that is, is one specific episode, but that guy has a history of that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't want to talk about, what was it, the Master Bruno? of Boobs or something? No, that's... No, that's not that guy. No, oh. Kenichi Shinada has a a issue with um. Let's just say he likes his characters young. Yeah, there's that issue, but that's not Bubblegum Crisis. Yeah. Uh, also, the other big franchise that came out, or that was big at this time, was a uh, uh, Kimiguri Orange Road, which is a series I've heard a lot about but never actually watched. But um, yeah, that's I think. Good enough discussion on City Hunter and things that are prevalent to City Hunter, and also not prevalent to City Hunter. My yes, begging Lolo, please, please uh, let us do Bubblegum Crisis. <laughs> is there someday, a Bubblegum there, Crisis game? There is a Bubblegum Crash game. Does that count? Yes. Yes. All right. I think. Hopefully. I, anyway. I'm on my yes. Hands and knees. <laughs> All right. Um. So we're gonna rank this using our normal one to twenty-one scale with the three extras. Um, which I don't think it's going to really matter, this one. Mm. Um, with one being absolute mastercraft and pretty much almost as good as perfect as you're going to get uh, to 21, which is barely even enjoyable, unironically. Um, or, I, mean, I it's it's just not good. Um, so, X, what number are you going to give? Well, uh, I walked into this ready to give this a 21. Uh, and one of the reasons why I wanted to hear Torpid first, because based on Torpid's uh, typing, um, it seemed like he was enjoying himself, so I wanted to see what I had missed. So listening to what Torpid said, and kind of you know, re-looking over all the pictures that he posted, there's two thoughts in my head. The one is that Rio fucking sucks. We all agree Rio fucking sucks. He's the worst part of the show. Uh, and all the sec- the sexual harassment stuff really drags the show down. So this is very clearly not a Mastercraft. It's not a blue. I don't even think it's a green. Uh, I'm willing to bring my score up to, I'll say, around 16 to 18. Okay. Carnival. Uh, it's like, I've been thinking, like, looking at this, it's like, Definitely a thing of like thinking about shows I would rather watch than this, and it's like I would probably have to think about because like closest thing I could probably think would be the thirteen to fifteen range, probably fifteen. Okay, Turbo. Yeah, this is a fun one, ain't it? Um, my issue too is I would probably put this on the level of 
pr the professional Go Go 13, if I'm gonna be real. That's kind of where I was thinking myself, but it's like looking at it's like. Oh. Where did we put I would Go -Go? watch this over Dick Tracy. At 13. Mm. I think there's a lot of things you'd watch over Dick Tracy, though. Yeah, I know. I'm just. I would watch this over Salamander, because at least this show could be interesting. Yes. Cyber suck. I once again, like, part of my issue with this show is. I know there's potential for better because that that one episode with the, the high school girl, the, the Sukaban high school girl really proved to me that there was far more potential for this show than it ever really realized. And it's kind of tragic because it was literally the one episode where he wasn't perving on the character. It was actually genuinely pretty enjoyable and funny. And it's like kind of a shame we never got to see more of that. But, like, I would probably put it at 13 with the professional Go Go 13. It's about, not quite in the same way, but it's about the same treatment of women and also potential for cool things. Yeah. Uh, so, originally, I was actually going to go 10, which is funny that I'm the one who has the highest, had the highest here. Yeah, that's wild. You're the one who uh, called the, you, you're the one who called it. You were like, I think I'm going to. I'm gonna level with you, Lolo. I brought mine down specifically to appease people because I would still watch this over Scott Pilgrim. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, so that I might... brought mine down as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, same, honestly, because it's like, I'm looking at this like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, so, mm. so here's the thing. Uh, I was thinking 14. I would um, be fine with that as a compromise. <laughs> but let's just look. Oh, we got because we turned this out, so it's a little bit cleaner. Mm -hmm. Um, I still say the professional go to the thirteen. If we're gonna look anywhere, is a strong comparison. At the it is. Place. It is actually a very good comparison. Um, God, mm. I would. Mm. I think. Mm. Like my problem is what I find interesting can tolerate is definitely a bit different than everyone else because I would definitely watch this over Little Nemo or Charlie Brown because I found those both very boring. It, the problem is that the the caveat the caveat yeah, is like no, see that's why I said because specifically my tolerance is different yeah, yeah. And I understand that mm -hmm. the thing yeah because the thing is also with Golgo thirteen there is some other caveats in that film mm -hmm. so with Golgo are... with Golgo it had problematic things however here here's 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 my argument with Golgo it's maybe I think it's like a, a Two two segments, uh, both around two to five sec minutes each, and then they're done. They're over with. They still suck. They're still terrible, but it's done and over with. With City Hunter, it's every fucking episode except the one Torpid just mentioned. It's prevalent. It's it just permeates the entire thing, and it's a constant, constant thing. Versus Golgo, which over and done. Move on. Over and done. Move on. I will have you know, Golgo looks like he has some of the least satisfying sex I've ever fucking seen, but go on. Look, that, I have I a mean, spreadsheet I mean, that tells you that that <laughs> apparently a lot of people. Look, Golgo 13, if that manga is to be believed, incredible dick. he has an amazing penis. That's what the manga said. <laughs> <laughs> word for word. An amazing penis doesn't make up for being a shit lover, but go on. Exactly. Uh... I don't care if that shit is fucking prehensile. I don't give a fuck. That man is stiff as a board the whole fucking time. He's not having a good time. Um, Sex is a means to an end for Golgo. Pretty much. I mean, quite what? Yes, but that's... Mm, okay. Like, I think 14 is a good compromise, to be honest. Uh, well, I kind of just want to... I do feel like putting it a little bit... Yeah, I think below 13. But I'm thinking 14, 15. The thing is, once you can start to get into 16, you got the fact that in Fatal Fury, the motion picture just kind of is boring, which mm -hmm. is kind of a problem. Like, that's a that's a can you get like it's the can you get enjoyment out of it? City Hunter, you can. Like, if you excise that part, you have some very enjoyable stuff. Fatal Fury, you can't. Like, that is just 16. a boring. So I'm just trying to think of 14 and 15. Mm. I will so watch four... over Salamander because at least shit is consistently happening. This is true. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, like, that's why I say 14 is probably the best compromise because, like, Salamander is, like, 
I'm surprised we haven't taken the really boring stuff and dumped it a little lower. Well, we, I think we did actually. Like, we did it, make I think some it, changes. Yeah. There's a difference I mean, between. To be fair, there's it's basically the wall of boring, and then things start to get more offensive. Like not. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like when I say offensive, I mean just like less appealing for more and more reasons, and eventually they do get offensive. Like yeah. I would say, like when when we get to like truly like. Like a fit, like around twenty is where we start to like, because yeah. I read I read fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen as like varying degrees of like either they misuse a premise, they're not interesting, or they have like problems that in der- that derive from the enjoyment of said <laughs> product, but there are still like things that can be found to be interesting in spite of the problems. It's- Once we get past. Eight, or they're like boring but inoffensive. It's yes. yeah. 20, 20 and twenty one are basically just like either borderline offensive or just incompetently done. Yeah, just yeah. completely like I, I I'll admit I was running into this with a twenty one in mind because I was just in, I was just in a shit mood because of it. But you know if we put it up against what's actually on the list, it's not fair. It's not fair to compare this to say. uh Megami Tensei, which is just borderline unwatchable. It's it's unwatchable. That this, has the this you that, can power through. Yeah, that you can has power through with City Hunter. Megami yeah. Tensei was just uh, even thinking back to it, I'm getting irritated. That has the problems of City Hunter, but also it just sucks in general. Like, yeah. Megami Tensei is probably some of the worst treatment of like that is bad. I have watched um, some absolute trash, and I I gotta say that that is probably one of the trashiest things I've ever watched. Megami Tensei isn't just trashy though. The problem is it is a hot fucking mess on all levels, and that's basically yeah. what a twenty one should be. Right. Yeah, and I, um, I I agree that City Hunter does not fall under that category. So the kind of thing that I'm thinking is basically fifteen through eighteen is kind of just sliding scale of dry, like basically how big are the dry spots, like in. 15, like, it's pretty big, and it just gets more and more as you go down. This doesn't really have dry spots. It just has very, it has little bits of, it's, the way that I was kind of thinking about it, it's a piece of bread that is still technically good, although it has bits of, bits of mold in it. If you were able to cut off the mold, does that, like, if you see that, are you able to cut off that piece and still, in good conscience, eat the rest of it? No. A lot of people, you see the mold, that entire thing's done. Yeah, that that's. That's that's. And here's actually... my fucking gremlin ass slicing away in the mold. A bad uh, one bad apple spoils the bunch because of all the the the. Um... That's wasteful. That's wasteful. I'm gonna throw that apple and eat the rest. <laughs> Enjoy your. Uh, I don't know what you get out of apples. Listeria. I don't fucking know. Do you? No, I don't fucking uh, know. I it, it anyway. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking 14. I mean, I'm not going to fight it. Uh, it's still bad, but it's not, you know, as long as it doesn't make it into any of the uh, no, upper tiers, I'm happy. It's not. No, 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 God, no. No, yeah, no, it was never going to go hit there. Yeah. Yeah. My, my greatest struggle with this show is knowing that there's potential for something better, but it was never really realized. And that's what makes me sad. Yeah. But I think that also that also is a pretty big point against it is is wasted potential. That's that's actually one of the one of the I think we have a charm for that. Yeah, yes. And it would be perfectly valid for it. Yeah. Yeah. Providing that there's other there's also other things we need to. Uh, Boy, it was market. the XDs, wasn't it? Which put that yikes in there. Yeah. I, I almost want to say yikes. And oh, oh wait. Um. Oh, what is it? No, we, can uh, put the, we can't touch uh, the music. The music is fine. Going- I'm going to tell you now, you want to throw in uh, Yeah, I was looking Yeah, that's what uh, There's there's a lot of flashing lights Oh, right, the photosensitivity Oh, what is, is it S? Is S the one I'm looking for? I thought you made a P There's no S No, um Because yeah, uh, you guys didn't see it, but there are episodes later on that have quite a bit of flashing Depictions of sexual assault and harassment There's definitely that That is S that is okay. Uh, I don't see S in the content tags. Oh, uh, that's in uh, look in Media Delta, not Retro and Crap City. Oh, uh, okay. I'm very um, bad at reading. So, yikes, photosensitivity, the sexual assault. 
Um, and I think maybe Gore Light because it is a pretty bloody show. No, um, really, actually, no. Okay, I don't think it's to the point. And also, it's I think it's like the hmm, I don't think it hits a point because it's also TV series. So, yeah, there's a bit of blood here and there, but usually it's pretty tame. And honestly, like the most unsettling thing had no blood involved at all. Yeah. So I think yikes, photosensitivity and sexual assault is the thing. OK, I would also uh, put H. E, yeah, actually, yes, because there's a there's a titty. Yeah, there's never any outright titty, but there's a lot of sexualization. No, there was a there was titty in the um the one restaurant. There was one. There, there was, was first, women. Yeah, 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 yeah. E, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know what? I mm, I'm gonna leave it just H because that is like the one I'm gonna leave H plus for like when it's like. Isn't yeah. H plus when it H is when you show titty. H plus is when you you Fuck. focus on titty. Yes. Book. This does not do that. Yeah. Um. Okay. Rio so, Saiba never gets laid. <laughs> so actually, I read somewhere that supposedly he's not actually sexually interested in any of them. It's just a thing he does to cover up, uh, like how he actually feels about everything. That I don't know be. how true that is. I I I wouldn't. I believe it. Um. Let's see. Is there anything we want to call out in music, charm, cinematography, storytelling, action, and art? Up music music well the opening is up a music fucking bop. Up music, down charm. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Bold face that down charm. I, I actually <laughs> want to say earworm for music specifically. Actually, yes. Yes. Because I kept on getting that song stuck in my head. Yeah, no, the ending theme is really fucking good, and I feel like it doesn't get enough mention, but the, the opening song just gets stuck in your head so easy. I can't remember them, and right now all I can think of is Mango Tango. Get so, that uh, I don't know what that says about me. Um, I, um, I would almost put... I don't know if I'd put... Because art's a weird one, because there's a lot of very specific detail, but... The dude also kind of has a bit of same face going on. Yeah, I wouldn't. Now, as I said, the issue is like there's a lot of detail in like the weapons and, yeah. you know, the, the backgrounds and the expressiveness. But like the actual characters aren't super detailed. If only we had a charm that expressed that it could be go go both good and bad. Sort of a uh, mile it may vary. I do want to say for action yeah. cheesy in a good way would be pretty fitting. Um, which is that? For action. Uh, for action. Geez, geez, uh, yeah. yeah. There's some real stupid shit. Shoots through his fucking hand to slow the fucking. Let me tell you bullet. about the 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 episode of Teenage Girl where he literally shoots the car from the fucking rear windshield through the front and completely fucks up the car. Was didn't he also like shoot a car and then it exploded? So he shot the car. Uh, but that caused the guy to, I don't know if he got hit, but it caused him to dive out of the way. It landed on a water fountain and then it exploded. Yeah, right, just yeah. For some reason. Oh, no, he shot the oil tank. Well, I mean, we all know that water and oil mix to make a combustible. It's just science. Let's say, isn't it Pinto Japanese? No, no it's, it's American. Ford. Oh, that's an American. That's Ford, right. Okay. Um, Pinto. let's see. <laughs> Anything to call up for yay or nay? I thought we already, like, wasted potential, but I think that's yeah. the big potential. one. So I mean, let's see, also, wait. boy, this was from the XDs, wasn't it? Yeah, yes. wasted potential. Um, boy, this is from the XDs. Um, yeah. So let's get this one up front and center. And then let's go... <laughs> oh, which one did I use for mileage, maybe? Barry. Or no, uh, wasted potential. Or is that in this place potential you? This sad looking emoji. What do you use? A trash bin? No, uh, it's the it's this sad this particular sad face. Okay, I'm gonna have to actually open this fucking web page because I have no clue what you're talking about. Uh it it's one of the sad emojis. Um 
Is there anything? Do we want to put a third? Nah. So, nah, I think it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that works. I guess you can put milk. Uh, yeah, under actually, yes. You were bitching about that lady's hair. <laughs> okay, so first off, <laughs> fuck you. Her hair was goddamn hideous. That bitch needs to great. learn how to style that shit. That hair you was shut the great. fuck up. Shut the. Your taste is dog shit. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> hair is just as bad as that Seymour character from Final Fantasy X. It's just. Uh... It's so bad. The eighties were criminal, and like it's a shame because there's some actually pretty decent character designs and outfits. But also, that woman's hair is so bad. No, eighties hair is probably one of the few good things out of that. You shut the fuck up. Putting my putting my hair in a beehive just to piss off Corfid. <laughs> 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 Joke's on you, I like Bayonetta. <laughs> Alright. Like an idiot. <laughs> I think that's good for City Hunter. Uh, it is a series that, boy, if its protagonist was better, it'd actually be a lot. Better. I would love to see an updated version of it, because it could potentially be It's also be great, because there are updated versions yes. of the show in Jack there. Chan. The, the, even after that, but Wait, it's great. It. He's still a shitlord. I like that uh, the content uh, spells out Ipsh. But you could make him a goober without being a pervert, and then it Liter- would be fine. Literally Mr. Magoo with a gun. I want that. I would watch that. I hate that I saw the, the content thing just out of, like, as I was like, oh god, it's the true name of God. Ipsh. <laughs> <laughs> just looking back through my screenshots, and boy, oh. howdy, there's some keepers. Remember oh, to keep Ipsh. a threat this time. Oh, right, yeah, that's a thing, isn't that? <laughs> gotta shut up my altar to Ipsh. Exist. That's fine, but next time, we gotta remember. Alright. So, I think that's gonna do it for City Hunter, which we're not gonna do a second one. <laughs> no, instead, we're doing something fucking great next time. Yeah. Um, okay, so before we go, uh, Axe, is there anything you want to call out? Uh, yeah, the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network and your local ASPCA. Please adopt. Don't shop. Uh, Carnival? Your local bail or mutual aid fund. Torpo? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Torpotypist and at Torpotypist on Twitter. And I would love to fucking plug up the mess that is Rio Saiba. Yep. Uh, so... Uh, next episode, because I had to think of something at last notice, uh, I did decide on something. Um, it's good. It's really good. black. <laughs> no. <laughs> black is in the name. Black is in the name. So I was looking on Retro Crush because this is how we were watching City Hunter. And there is there is very prominently shown something that I've been wanting to watch for a while. And it's a return of a director that actually speaking of Gogo 13. <laughs> um, it is another Osama Dezaki film, which I am looking forward to, but it is of a franchise that I have also wanted to talk about, even though we have not specifically taken a look at a game based off of it. Uh, we've taken a look at the Astro Boy game for the Game Boy, which has Osama Tezuka's star system in it. And one of the members of that star system is one Blackjack. Um, the doctor for hire who can do see this is going to be another guy does crazy stuff thing and it's going to be great uh so we're going to do blackjack the movie um which i have not seen it before but it's an isamu dezaki movie a blackjack which i like both of those things so that's going to be good (laughs) um so well i hope it's good we'll find out uh, it next is good. Time. Yeah, I've seen it before, like more than once. Um, so we will take a look at that next time. So thank also, you all. Okay. Before you go, quick shout out to Retro Crush and Discotech Media in general for their incredible work on dredging up old rights and also trying to recover a bunch of old anime and film. Preservation is always good in every every media. Yes. I, I just wanted to get that out of the way too, because like. Seriously, that shit's great. Yes, thank you. You you have let me do this easily. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy your free advertising, Retro Crush. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, also, Blackjack the movies on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, okay, <laughs> so 
Oh wait, it's only I'm it's I'm gonna let Spanish. You know a secret. I'm gonna let you know a secret. Lolo, uh, Discotech puts a bunch of their stuff up on multiple websites because you could also probably find it on Prime as well. This is true, but also. Regardless. Yeah. I feel like Lolo would like to close out the show. Yeah. Thank you all for listening. <laughs> If you would like to see the list in which we have ranked every single thing we've done for Media Delta, you can go to r3.ldp.life in your browser. If you'd like to watch the sister show that determines what could show up on Media Delta, that's Retro Rank Rhapsody, you can watch it live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Puzzle, or on YouTube at youtube.ldp.life. If you would like to discuss this episode with others, please join our Discord server by going to discord.ldp.life in your browser, which should give you a link. Thank you again for listening.